By the end of this video, you're gonna have a full understanding of dihybrid crosses. This is a process that will allow us to track the inheritance of two traits at once. If that sounds like a lot, don't worry, I'm gonna walk you through the entire thing and you'll be a pro in no time. But before we get to dihybrid crosses, we have to brush up on a few key concepts. First, there's genotype. This refers to the genetic makeup of an organism. Then there's phenotype. This refers to the physical expression of those genes. For example, in pea plants, we have different genotypes for the height of the pea plant with the big T allele coding for tall and the little t allele coding for short. We also have to understand the concept of dominant versus recessive. In our example, big T is a dominant trait and little t is recessive. That means that once we have the presence of the dominant allele, that trait is the one that's gonna be expressed physically. And if the recessive allele is present, its presence is gonna be masked by the presence of the dominant allele. And as a reminder, the possible options for genotypes are big T, big T, homozygous dominant, big T, little t, heterozygous, and little t, little t, homozygous recessive. We also need to understand what a Punnett square is. It's a simple and really useful tool that allows us to predict the possible genetic outcomes of a cross between two parents. Each square in a Punnett square represents a possible genotype for the offspring. Now, if any of that sounds confusing, please check out my previous video. I cover it in full detail. It'll be clear after that. I'll link to that in the description below. In this video, we're gonna be using a Punnett square again, but this time to explore dihybrid crosses. So what is a dihybrid cross? It's a breeding experiment that tracks the inheritance of two traits simultaneously. In my previous video, we looked at a monohybrid cross that only studied one trait, the height of the pea plant, for example. In this video, we're sticking with our trusty pea plants, but we're gonna look at two traits, height and flower color. Once again, the height can be tall or short. Now the flower color, that can be purple or white. And for that trait, purple is gonna be the dominant one, and white is recessive. So we use big P for the dominant purple allele and little p for the recessive white allele. Now just a note, the, the letter that we use is usually the first letter of the dominant trait. Okay, so let's start with the first cross. We're gonna start with a parent generation with one parent plant being tall with purple flowers. And remember those are the two dominant traits. So the genotype will be big T, big T, Big P, big P. For the other parent, we're gonna go with all recessive. So it'll be short with white flowers. So little t, little t, little p, little p. I know it might sound weird that I'm saying big and little instead of capital and lowercase, but it's easier to say, and I grew up saying it, so that's what we're doing. Big up to St. Martin, yeah! So they're both homozygous for both traits, meaning they have two of the same types of alleles for each trait. With me so far? Awesome. Now, when we cross the parent plants, the result is pretty simple. We don't really need to do a Punnett square for that. We can if we want, but it's more work for no additional benefit. The result is pretty simple. Since we have one parent with all dominant alleles and one parent with all recessive alleles, all of the offspring in the resulting F1 generation, they're gonna be heterozygous. So that's big T, little t, big P, little p. These plants get one of each allele from each parent, so it makes sense. And since tall and purple flowers are the dominant traits, these plants will all be tall with purple flowers. Now let's get to our Punnett square. The Punnett square for our dihybrid cross is gonna be similar to that of our monohybrid cross, but instead of being two by two, it'll be four by four, giving us 16 different combinations. Now for each parent, we'll list out the possible gamete combinations. We can have big T, big P, big T, little P, little T, big P, and little T, little P. We're gonna take these options and put them at the top for one parent and also at the side for the other parent. Now, for each box within the Punnett square, we're gonna bring down the alleles from the parent at the top and bring over the alleles from the parent at the side. This gives us all the possible genotypes of the offspring that could result from this combination of gametes. And when we tally up the phenotypic results, 
you're gonna see that out of the 16 plants, on average, nine will be tall with purple flowers, three will be tall with white flowers, three will be short with purple flowers, and one will be short with white flowers. That gives us a ratio of nine to three to three to one. And that's what we see with dihybrid crosses. So to bring this all home, a dihybrid cross, if we're starting with homozygous parents, one that's dominant for both traits and one that's recessive for both traits, is gonna yield a heterozygous F1 generation. When we cross that F1 generation, we're gonna get a ratio of nine to three to three to one, and you can always use a Punnett square to determine what the genotypes and the phenotypes will be. Now in the next video, we're gonna look at sex-linked traits and genetic disorders to understand how certain traits and disorders are passed down through generations. So make sure to check that one out next. My name is Leslie Samo from Interactive Biology where we're making biology fun. That's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.